In this clip, I want to deepen the connection between Petri nets and the label transition systems induced by these nets. I want to do this based on some patterns in Petri nets. As a first pattern, consider the sequence, as shown on my left. In this net, transition A is always followed by transition B. In the label transition system, this is visible by the two transitions that always occur one after the other. So in any state reached by transition A, you will see an outgoing transition B. The second pattern is concurrency. Two transitions can fire in random order, but need to both to fire. So in this case, we are in the state that places P and Q both one token. Transition A is enabled and fires, resulting in a state where places R and Q are marked. After firing transition B, we end up in a state with one token in R and one in S. And of course, I could also have first fired transition B and then fire A. In the label transition system, concurrent transitions are recognized by this diamond shape that we see over here. Whether you first execute A and then B, or first A, B and then A, you end up in the same state. Hence, if you see a diamond like this in a label transition system, you know that the transitions are concurrent. A third pattern is choice. A choice between A and B is signified by a state with two outgoing edges, but the diamond is not completed. Hence, if transition A fired, the precondition for transition B is removed, and thus it is not enabled anymore, and vice versa, firing transition B hampers transition A. So when we have a label transition system, we can search for these patterns to discover a petri net that generated this label transition system. So let us consider an example. See the transition system on my right. Can we find a petri net that has the same reachability graph as this label transition system? As a first step, I label all the states in the system. Next, I observe that the system starts with transition B and transition D. So let's focus on the transition B first. If I apply this net, then transition B can fire, as there's a token in place K. That means that R is the marking which place K has one token, and that S is the state in which there is one token in place L. Now let's look at transition D. I could model it as a choice resulting in the following net. But now I have a problem in completing this diamond over here. So choice is not the right choice here. Instead let's focus on a concurrent net. I get a result like this. Now state R resembles the marking KN, and state S the marking LN, and state T marking KO. In this net I can complete a whole diamond over here, BD and DB. Now let's have a closer look to state S over here. Again I observe a diamond here with C and D. So I also observe the transition C is always always occurs after transition B. Here we have a C and before it is a B. Here we have a C and before it is a B. Here we have a C and before it is a B. Hence transition C has to be in sequence with transition B and concurrent with transition D. So that means that I can create a net like this. That also means that I can fill in my label transition system a bit more. So state U is the marking MN State X is the marking MO, and state K T is still KO. Now let's look to the next diamond. Here we see transitions B and E concurrently. So I also observe that this E always happens after D. So that means that transition E needs to be in sequence with transition D, and concurrent with transitions B. And I also note that it is concurrent to C, as here I have a diamond with C and E. So I can build a pattern net like this. And that means that I can fill in some more gaps. So state W is actually marking KP, and state Y is actually marking LP. So that means that I now covered my label transition system almost completely. There are still two missing transitions. Here transition G and transition A. Let's focus on transition G first. So 
observe it moves from state T to state Y. State T is the marking with tokens in places K and O, and it transforms it in a state with a token in L and P. The only way to do this is by removing the tokens K and O, so input places, like this, and to have output places in L and P, like this. So now transition G moves the, removes the tokens from places K and O, state T, and adds tokens to, states, uh, to places L and P, state Y. And a similar observation I can do for state A, because in state A, Z is, my, is the marking MP, and A removes the tokens from M and P. So I can add an A and add input places M and P, and it produces in state R. So it has to produce a token in places K and N, like this. Now the pattern net on my left side has exactly the same reachability graph as the label transition system on the right. You can check this by creating the reachability graph and validate that the two graphs are isomorphic. In other words, that they are the same. To summarize, in this clip I have shown you how different Petronets patterns are visible in the label transition system. With sequences, we see that one transition is always followed by the other. In choices, we observe that there are two outgoing transitions, but one hampers the firing of the other. And in concurrency, we observe a diamond in the label transition system. We can use these observations to reconstruct a Petronet that has the same reachability graph as the given label transition system. The procedure is always the same. Create an initial Petronet. You may even start in the middle of a label transition system. Create a reachability graph of your constructed net and check how you should adapt the net to get a closer fit to the given label transition system. And you repeat this process. Good luck modeling!